Okay, welcome back. We're in part three of the video tutorial series on creating an exterior wall using Revit based off of Building Construction Illustrated. We're looking at a two by six wall with siding and we've created pretty much our uh, wall system, flooring system, foundation wall, and roofing system in the previous video. In this video we're going to add a few items. And here you can see I'm a little bit ahead of you I want to show you what I've done. So let's get into it. This is the spot I was talking about where I'm a little bit ahead. I've thrown in a J bolt, I've thrown in my rim joist, and I've thrown in a keyway here. And the keyway I used just by using a masking tool, like shown in the previous video, to mask off this bottom edge of the existing concrete wall. And then I used detail line to fill in this key to mechanically lock in our foundation wall a little bit better to our footing. Now there would also be rebar here, J rebar, and some rebar down at the bottom of the footing and some rebar in the wall, but we're not going to deal with rebar in these videos. Going through at the top, locking into our mud plate, which in the previous video we used a clipping mask on with an invisible line border. Uh, we're going to throw in a J bolt here, and to do that, to help you find it, let me show you how to get to it. I'm going to go to the Annotate tab. I'm going to go under Component. I'm going to Load Family, Detail Items, as usual, for everything else that we're doing in this video to detail this out. It's all going to be in the Detail Items folder. Hidden under Metals and Common Work Results for Metals, we find the Metal Fastenings folder. Inside this folder, the J bolt that I'm referring to um, is the hook uh, side of what we want. I'm going to say open. Underneath my type selector, we're going to search for our anchor bolts, and we're going to choose the half inch option. And right now when I hit spacebar, it just flips it around. So I'm going to have to do my best to just kind of throw that in the middle of my mud plate. Hit escape a couple times. Click on that J bolt, and we're going to mirror it based on the center axis and hit escape. We don't want two, so we're going to delete the other one. We're going to let the side of the hook go towards the thicker side of our foundation wall. It would be a little too close to the edge if we sent it over to the right like it was previously. Now that our J bolt's in place, I did the same thing, but I brought in a 2x10 framing with detail lines, but under wood framing and wood nominal section profiles. I brought that in and threw that in right there for our flooring. And then once again, this was done with a clipping mask and then a detail line to draw out the actual um, keyway for our foundation. Let's take a look at that as shaded so you can see the areas that I used the clipping mask on to just kind of detail that out a little bit better. Okay, now that's all locked in. We're working our way up. Everything looks good here. I know a lot of times people run their plywood sheathing down the side and bump that to their foundation. This one I would suggest bumping the plywood to the deck and then having tie back run all the way down and then also your siding. Uh, plywood would also be probably a little stronger to run it all the way down, but I'm basing this off of a prefab situation uh, with the walls. Now with our eave, we can get into some more detailing and we can also do the same with our ceiling uh, our ceiling joists. Let me show you on Building Construction Illustrated here a couple of the uh, items that, that show this pretty well. Um, going into chapter 5, go to chapter 5, page 42 and we're going to take a look at this interaction between the floor joists and the roof rafter and the foundation floor. And so here we've thrown in our J bolt just as shown, our rim joists stacked on top of that. We have our first floor. If there was a second floor, we would just stack another floor on top of it, just like we did on top of that mud sill. Just pretend the mud sill is the top plate of the first floor. And we just go as follows. And then all the way up until we get to our ceiling joists which we've already drawn right here, stacked on top of the plates, and then our rafter, which would then be in front or behind it. Um, 
and that, would, that pattern would stay consistent all the way through the house to keep equal spacing. Let's see. Here, you can see another example of that interaction between the floor and the foundation and our flooring up here. Um, but something to note is that we could have some blocking sitting across the top in between the rafters and the joists to help nail our drywall too. So if we wanted to add a piece of blocking, we definitely could. We would do a 2 by 4 and just have half of that cantilever off of the top plate. And once again, that blocking would be in between the ceiling joist and the rafter. So if we did want to detail that out, we can throw in that component real quick by loading a family, going down to our detail items, and then going into wood and plastic, wood framing, and let's go to the section view and say open. Scrolling down to our 2x4, which is 3.5 by 1.5, and, and then selecting it with our type selector, 2x4, hitting spacebar to rotate, and let's get that centered on there. And that's our blocking in between. That gives us a nice nailing surface so we can put screws, drywall screws, about every six inches through our drywall into that blocking or it could find its way into the ceiling joist which is nice. Okay, so now that we have that blocking in place detailed out pretty well, let's take a look at chapter 6 building construction illustrated and getting into page 20 on chapter 6. So 6.20 we have our wood rafter framing and here I wanted to just show that clipping of the ceiling joist uh, which would be up here so that way it would follow the roof line uh, underneath the rafter and so in this situation right here you can see how it interacts with the double top plate sometimes strapping is required to then lock in the ceiling to the wall as well um, and there's some different bracketry that we see here in our case we're just not gonna we're not gonna show that but I wanted to point out this Part of the chapter for wood framing for joists, so you can see some different interactions and options you have, such as a ledger board being tied into a wall if you have a shed roof coming off of that, or if that terminates at a floor, you can throw in a kicker to help anchor that um, solid to your floor deck. You can bird's mouth that off with an overhang, the plumb cut for your fascia and your soffit. Um, same thing we have here, a little overhang detail collar tie, if you have a finished uh, attic uh, and you want to uh, have like a vaulted ceiling, you can throw in some collar ties, whereas before the ceiling joists uh, act as those ties laterally for the roof. And then some different venting options are spec'd out here as well. I wanted to point that out to you. Now on the next page, we have some rafter framing. You can see some blocking with uh, a screened vent here. So if you did have um, no uh, soffit underneath, You'd want to vent that with your uh, blocking in between the rafters. We could also put a nailing board going across, which we could have coming across right here. So we can anchor in a board to our siding and then come across horizontally. So we're at 90 degrees with our plumb cut here. And then that can become our soffit for our overhang. So we could throw in a blocking just like it's illustrated right here. And underneath that, we would have our vent to allow air to vent up into our attic and then out at top ridge vents on our actual house as well so the venting can just flow um, from cold air low to hot air high as we go. You also have to throw on a sub fascia and uh, uh, actual fascia board so here you see your sub fascia on the outside and a decorative fascia on top of that and then our gutters would actually go in at the very end on top of that. So I think we should dive into that. Let's get that modeled up real quick. So for this eave detail. I'm just going to zoom in over on our uh, board right here and I'm going to have to throw in a couple more pieces of lumber um, from our components and so if we did a 2x4 nailer uh, we can just make that level with the bottom. I'm going to throw in a reference line to make my life a little bit easier so I'm going to hit escape architecture tab reference plane and let's just throw in a horizontal line real quick, which will be deleted later, to then bump our nailer too. We also see that this siding and uh, um, is going to be in the way because we're going to bump our siding most likely to this nailer. So I'm going to uh, 
and get that out of the way with a masking region. And if I zoom in, I can just go right over it and get that out of my way. And I did that with an invisible line. There we go, it's out of the way. Now we can go and get that 2x4 blocking into place. So component, 2x4. And just throw that right in. Right now I'm just thinking about its height. Lock that in right there. I want to put that behind the rafter. So I'm going to send that backward, send backward, let's add two to the back, um, now I'm going to take this and send that to the back, and I can't really I guess get my rafter in front of that, so I'm going to take a uh, another approach with the masking region, and we're going to mask off just the top of that blocking. I think it'll look a little bit less confusing if we do it like that. And then from this blocking, we're going to come straight out with the board. And we'll just use detail line for that. Straight out. And we can just assume that that's going to be a 2x4 coming straight out or a 2x2. Two two. Essentially, we have blocking coming straight out. I can delete out this reference plan. So now we have our blocking for our fascia. Event. And then from there, let's do our subfascia that meets up right against it. So we'll put in a, another component. And let's see how we fare with a 2x10. Uh, it's a little too big. So let's try a 2x8. So we'll load family. Or we might have to do like a 2x10 that's ripped down to the uh, side. Like here you see that it's clipped. Um, so we could actually do that 2x10. A 2x8, this was made out of, it's going to come a little short. But let's see how it goes anyways. Um, we might even have a 2, no we don't. Detail items, wooden plastic, wood framing, section open, scroll down, 2x8, okay. And that's not it. There it is. And so it's a little short, but let's just keep it on there. What we can, what we can do is at this slope, bring our sheathing down. And one way to do it is you clip it. And you go a bigger lumber and you clip it short. But we might be able to bump the corner here of our two by eight subfascia. So I'm going to take a detail line and just extend it down its path at the same angle and kind of get an idea where it's supposed to be and to help me with that I'm going to set another reference plane kind of get an idea to follow that line and they actually set that reference plane really well I want to click at two points on the line itself I think I had messed up. Let's try that again. Reference plan. There we go. Parallel. Now I can click and drag it out to extend. So there's my roof line. And now with this, we can use detail line once again. So annotate detail line. We can click and just draw that plywood out. And we see that this plywood is going to bump into a fascia board. So we're just going to draw that plywood straight out. And we'll do an offset of a half inch. To get the uh, top elements. Now that we have those lines transferred down a little bit more, we can take our region and we'll just draw that through so it doesn't look like it breaks right here. 
close it off and hit, say OK. And we can take those detail lines, continue those through. There we go. And now with those, all we have to do is make a uh, basically a plum cut on those, and we'll bump our fascia fascia board up to it. So for our plumb cut, so now our detail line, straight up, 90 degrees. And I'm going to move that though, right to the corner. And we're just going to trim up these boards. to that plumb line, just like so. These can be plumb cut or they can actually be, well our shingles actually are going to keep going. Um, these can be plumb cut, the, the plywood or it can just end at a 90. As long as we have room here for our soffit, uh, or our, our fascia board to go over it, um, we'll be good. So now that we have that, I'm going to grab a, uh, a 2 by 10 uh, one by ten piece of uh, fascia here, a decorative fascia, to go over our board here. Uh, this we're going to say is our shingles. So we're going to let those run um, straight out by about an inch. So right here, um, we're going to take it and add an inch to it. So I want that to be. Uh, we'll just use our. Uh, reference plan come out an inch horizontally oh, the model. No. sorry let's just do that with detail line it's actually I think the fastest way to do it one inch out and this is where we are going to terminate um, our uh, shingles so we'll let those overhang an inch so from here, detail line, straight up and straight down. Come on, straight up. There we go. Straight down. There we go. I'm going to delete out my one inch line. And that's about how much I want my shingles to overhang. And so we can just trim that up. Two corners. Two corners. And, uh, well, I forgot to add on the, so let's do, uh, one and three quarters of an inch. I do one foot. Let's try that again. 1.75 inches. There we go. I had to add on another three quarters of an inch, so I can still overhang an inch after my fascia board is on. So, sorry, that was confusing. Let's delete this line out. Annotate, detail line. Throw our end of our sheeting on there. And then now we're throwing our fascia, and that's gonna be our decorative board that our gutters would then go on to, and our flashing and so forth. So. I'm going to go to Component, Load Family, Detail Items. I'm going to go to Wooden Plastic, Wood Framing, Lumber Side Section, Open, 1 by 10, Fashion Board, OK. Let's find the 1 by 10. All right, on my house, this is made out of cedar. And we just bump that right up to the uh, shingle or the sheeting or what have you. And just bump that right up there. And 
There we go. Now from here, do some flashing on a gutter. So you could have a drip edge with the type of gutter. If we have uh, either one, we're gonna have some flashing. Um, with detail line, we can do more of like uh, a medium line or something. And you're gonna have a little bit of flower on profile for right now. <clears throat> so in your section, we can just take our uh, detail line. I'm not really sure why my gutter didn't show. I'm going to go my thin line. And uh, if I didn't have this uh, drip edge on here, I would tuck my gutter in underneath that flashing there. So detail line. I'm going to draw a gutter profile. Let's come down. Um, let's come down. Two inches, roughly. Maybe two and a half. And we'll come over three or four, whichever one we would like. Um, that's going to be our. I mean, that's going to be our top profile. So actually. We come over like two, then we can do like an arc or just a diagonal out roughly to like about four or three. And do like a little lip on there for our gutter. And we can just change that up real quick to uh, like a total of three inches wide. And uh, we can change up the profile slightly, you know, whatever you deem looks appropriate. There's usually a little lip on there for some rigidity on the end. Comes down and through. And there's our gutter. And uh, once again, Revit does have these as detail items. I tried to download one from Revit City, but we had an error there. Um, our soffit will go under here. And our siding would bump right up to it. So I guess the only way to piece in, we can just throw in like a wood soffit. Um, finding out this measurement we can see that this is about seven and a half, so I, which will be three quarters thick. And I don't want model line, I want detail line. And we'll just draw that down about three quarters. That's a one by material if we're gonna make out of wood. And then we can draw our X through that with a detail line to show that we rip that down to fit nicely for our soffit. And so that's essentially how our eave is formed for our home. We have our soffit there. And I think we're just missing some insulation in the wall. And uh, we can throw that in with the insulation button right here. And that's our insulation width, so we can change that to five and a half, and from center to center, we can throw that insulation into our wall cavity right here. And if we wanted to insulate our attic, we can do the same thing. Insulation. Um, let's choose just like nab it up here in the attic. That's going across, and maybe we'll just match the uh, the height of our ceiling joists on this one. Um, I'm just going to use my uh, keys here to take that and bump it down slightly, just to show that we're we're resting there. We need to allow room for air to flow up through here, so we're going to just hold it back a bit. And uh, oftentimes, this is blown in insulation. So it's not typically shown that way, but we're showing that we're insulating our, our attic here so our whole space is insulated and our attic is still vented to stop mold growth. And there we have it. There we have a completely detailed out um, section view from the foundation up through the floor system, through the wall system, and through the roofing system um, from Building Construction Illustrated Notes. Uh, put together in Revit. Don't forget to save and subscribe.